Welcome back to Cooking with Pashadas. Uh, today, I have a great video for you. Um, I went fishing this morning at around 4 a.m. and luckily, I was able to bring some fish home. So today, I'm gonna show you how to prepare a Wisconsin style dry battered fish fry. And if my dog does not shut up, I will be throwing her in there as well. Uh, okay, Kelly, shh. We will be, be <laughs> Sorry, we will be preparing uh, bass and uh, bluegill. Um, so the thing with bluegill and bass is with bluegill, you want to try and keep the bigger the bigger bluegills, um, and don't you, you don't want to keep too many. There's obviously there's restrictions uh, within the state that you live in of how many you can catch and how many you can keep. Um, same with the bass. Uh, with the bass, you always want to try and keep them between 14 and 18 inches. Anything bigger than that, those are good breeding size, uh, good spawning size fish. And uh, so you want to leave those alone. Same with the bluegill. Um, anyway, so with a dry batter, what you're going to do is you're going to take your favorite piece of fish. It doesn't have to be locally caught out of the lakes. It can be something you picked up from the grocery store, cod, whatever, cod, flounder. Um, perch you can get from the grocery store. So what you're going to do is you soak it in something. It can be hot sauce. It can be um, it can be beer, and that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, we live in Wisconsin, home of Miller Light, High Life. Um, uh, so I have some fish here that I soaked in High Life. And all you're going to do, is make sure it's all marinated, nice and wet. And then you have your, your flour and cornstarch uh, mixed with any seasonings you like, spicy, not spicy, pepper, salt. Uh, the link, or I'm sorry, the description of the recipe will be in the description uh, so you can check it out and try it for yourself. So the first step is make sure you have a pan or a pot. I like to use a pot because it's deeper, prevents the grease from going all over your kitchen. Uh, the second thing you need to make sure is that it's hot enough to fry fish. Um, so make sure it's at the temperature of 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And all you're going to do is take a few pieces of your freshly caught fish or store-bought fish. But if you're an angling master, it will be freshly caught fish. And then you're just going to toss them. You're going to toss in the flour. Now you can coat the fish in flour, then egg, and then flour. Um, that's kind of like a dry batter, but you shouldn't need that extra moisture uh, if you soak it long enough. As you can see, that's nice and coated with flour, and then you're going to put it in the frying oil, and that's what you're going to look for, is that nice bubbling. It's always a good idea to maybe have your frying oil a little hotter than 350 degrees because when you put in your fish, that temperature of the oil is going to drop. Especially if it's right out of the refrigerator. So 375 is always a good, uh, a good you know, gauge to, to do it at where you won't have burning involved with your fish. So what you're looking for with the fish is you really want it, to, you want it to float before you pull it out. And you can leave it in there a little longer and make sure, you know, if you like it a little more crispy, that's fine. Then leave it in there a little longer. And then obviously adjust the temperature if you need to. I suggest buying a thermometer and you can check your oil and make sure it's at the right temperature. So let them cook. You can flip them periodically.
These are looking great already. While those are cooking, uh, make sure you have a plate handy. With some paper towels to collect all the excess grease. Alright, these are looking fantastic. And those are floating, so they are done. It is as simple as that. You get a restaurant or bar quality Wisconsin style fish fry in the comfort of your own home. And you can play around with it with any seasoning you like. Just make sure your oil is at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 375 if the fish is right out of the refrigerator. And like I said, the recipe for the flour mixture that I use will be in the description below. So thank you for watching and tune in for the next video. Thanks.